What's up everyone? My name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So I hope you have um, some snacks. I hope you've got some time because this is a very long speed build. This might actually be one of the longest speed builds I've ever done. The uh, footage for the build itself is just over 52 minutes long, so it's actually kind of crazy. And that's because I built three homes on one lot in the world of Del Sol Valley, which is the world that came with the Get Famous expansion pack. And I am really excited about this build. Um, I actually finished this one a while ago, but I never got around to sharing it because for one, it takes a while to like record the speed build and edit everything. And then we had a new um, stuff pack come out in the meantime as well. So I was a little bit distracted by, by all of that as well. But I'm here now and I'm very excited to share this build with you. So my idea for this build or for this lot was to do three small houses next to each other like kind of create a little street area if you will um, because this is a very big lot it is a 50 by 40 if I'm not mistaken like I said in the world of Del Sol Valley which is the world that came with Get Famous and this is funnily enough the starter neighborhood at least that's kind of what it feels like um, there are some like starting celebrities in this world, or, like some townies and things, but it's by no means supposed to be like a very rich and wealthy uh, neighborhood. And you can also kind of tell that by the small houses and the cars and the trailers and stuff kind of like parked around in the neighborhood. And um, I was trying to build something that would fit in with that entire vibe, if that makes sense. And yeah, so I came up with the idea of building three houses kind of like next to each other, um, just kind of next to each other on this entire lot to like fill up the space since the lot is so big. This lot is I always like I get a little confused by why they place like a 50 by 40 with basically three separate driveways going up to it on one lot. I don't understand. Like to this day, I'm like, why did they do that? Now it makes sense because we have four rent so we can make multi uh, unit lots. We can basically just do like multiple houses or like apartments on one lot and it all makes sense. And it's really fun to create that. So I was uh, very happy to be using that new functionality essentially here on this lot to basically just make it make sense. But I'm like, why didn't they divide this into three separate lots, just like right next to each other, two or like three 20 by 15s or something like that. I feel like that would make so much more sense because as you can see, maybe, um, sometimes you can catch a glimpse of it. Like there are three little driveway situations going up to this one lot. So to this day, I'm like, I, I truly don't understand why they didn't divide it into three separate lots instead of one big one because now I never use this lot. I only use it, I I think I've built on here like once and it was a tiny home community for artists, I believe. I did that years ago, but I essentially did the same thing. We just didn't have the for rent pack at the time. So it wasn't gonna be as functional. I mean, you could obviously use it, but you'd have all those Sims in one household and like, and like you'd have to play with all those households or like all those sims at the same time in one household and now with the for rent expansion pack you can actually make these houses separate houses for separate households and play with one household and one house at a time and they're gonna be little rentals and i thought that that would be really cute for this lot ever since ever since for rent came out i've seen multiple creators do this same thing. I even saw someone, I think, build six small houses on this lot, which I thought was so cool and so impressive. And I've seen people do three houses next to each other on this lot. And I was feeling very inspired by that. I was like, I want to do that too. I saw so many cool things on Instagram and on YouTube, and I was just feeling very inspired by all those amazing creators. So I was like, you know what? I want to give that a go as well. I want to build three houses next to each other here on the lot and I had so much fun with this. I was trying to make this very cute. I was trying to keep the shapes of the houses quite simple. There are three bungalows or actually there are two bungalows and one of them has a sneaky little second floor. It's only very small, but that one does have like a little second floor. So there's two bungalows and one two story home. 
Um, and they all fit small families. So that's really fun. You could really use this for like your family gameplay and you'd have all your neighbors nearby and you just see your neighbors around. And I just feel like that is such a cute little gameplay aspect. I really like the uh, residential rental lots where you can create multiple units on one lot. I just, I really like having Sims living like having the Sims live so close to each other, just like have your neighbors be so close to you, if that makes sense. I don't know what it is about that. Maybe it's just like the realism of it all, but I really enjoy that aspect these days and it really adds to gameplay. It makes it so much more lively. So yeah, I thought that these houses would be really cute for that as well. Um, these aren't pack restricted. At first, I really wanted to try and make this pack restricted, but I had so much fun with these houses that I was like, you know what? I'm just not gonna restrict myself pack-wise. I'm just gonna allow myself to use all the things and um, come up with a, with a cool build that way. So that's what I did. So I'm sorry about that. It's definitely not a limited pack build. Though I will say, oh, I might be lying, but I do think that I actually uploaded an unfurnished version of this to the gallery as well. There is a version where all three houses are furnished and there is a version where I just did all the landscaping and all the exterior furnishing, if you will. Um, like I placed like dumpsters and I parked cars and there's maybe some like benches and stuff like outside, but then the houses themselves just have the floor plans done and they're not furnished. So I do believe I uploaded that to the gallery as well because uh, I was building this on stream for the most part and people were really enjoying it and they were like, oh my goodness, I want to furnish these houses myself, kind of like alongside you or whenever I have the time for it. So I decided to upload a version, like an unfinished, unfurnished version to the gallery as well. I have been doing that more and more lately and I believe that people seem to really enjoy that. Usually when I build on stream, I'll work on the exterior first and then I'll move on to the interior at a later point. That's just the way I build in general. Um, so at some point I'm probably going to have like the floor plan done and I'm gonna going to have the like um, landscaping done and the windows and stuff and then I'll move on to the interior and that's actually the perfect point basically to just like kind of upload it to the gallery and have people um, furnish it themselves so they can have fun with the shell and like come up with whatever interior they want and it sometimes really helps to like have a floor plan done that way too I feel that sometimes helps I'm personally not the greatest when it comes to floor plans anyway, so it's nice to just have something there. Like if you're not a builder, but you but you do like decorating, then I feel like it might be fun to have like the floor plan done so you don't have to think about it and you can just kind of go ahead and furnish it. Um, all these houses actually do have garages out front and they also have sheds in the back. So separate sheds um, in the backyard as well. So there's, there's a lot of space for just hobbies and activities for all these houses. And you could very easily turn the um, garages that are attached to the house, you could very easily turn that into an extra bedroom if you wanted to. For now, I basically just turned all the garages into actual garages with like benches or like um, cabinets and stuff. And I put some like gym equipment in most of them and just some like storage items and stuff like that. So they're not the most functional the way I furnish these houses, except for like little indoor gyms. That's kind of functional and like a good activity for your Sims to do like a skill building item. Um, but it easily gives you enough space for an extra bedroom for all of these houses. So that is really nice. And you could always just use the shed out back for your activities, for your hobbies, uh, basically turn it into anything you want. You could even turn it into a little, um, maybe like a, a little extra bedroom with a small bathroom for guests, like a little guest house in the back. You could even do that if you wanted to. It's really small though, the shed. So it might be a little cramped, a little small, but it's definitely something you could play around with. So I feel like there is enough space and opportunities basically for these houses to really make it fit your household that you want to play with. Um, so yeah, I feel like that is definitely possible and I'm just really happy with how these houses came out in general. I was really trying to make it 
not necessarily very messy, but also not too matchy matchy and too nice looking. I was really trying to focus on the realism of it all and have it look a little bit messy. The houses like color scheme wise don't really go together that well. Like the middle house, for example, is very colorful and um, the one all the way over on the right side is very tan and they have like these light green and white ish like window frames. It's kind of outdated in a way. And that's really what I try to embrace here too. And interior wise, they're also all very different <laughs> from each other. And I was definitely trying to come up with different little storylines or at least just households in general. So I had a little bit of an idea like who I was furnishing this for. And I feel like these houses are best for just like really cute family gameplay. I mean, this is the world that came with Get Famous, of course. So maybe you want to focus on sims like starting out in the acting career or music career or like influencer career like maybe trying to get famous if you will but not everybody living in uh del sol valley necessarily needs to become a celebrity i feel like it's like in real life like not everyone living in los angeles is a celebrity or aspires to be a celebrity you know it's just the place where it all happens but not everybody aspires the same thing um so maybe that's the same here so they're just cute little family homes and for the landscaping you can kind of see that i got started on that i was using a lot of debug and it was a little bit overwhelming i really wanted to try and create pathways um, connecting the back to the front of the lot because this lot is so fun. Like I just, I really like this neighborhood in general. I just wish that we had a little bit more lots here and maybe the lots were a little bit smaller. Now that we have, like I said, the residential rental um, lot type and we can just kind of create rentals and multiple houses on one lot, it makes more sense this way. But it, it would have been so cool if we had gotten really small lots here, like really close together. And that would be really just like pretty realistic and fun for smaller houses, I feel. But this makes sense now, too. I really try to create a little street here and I try to connect the, the back to the front of the lot with like little pathways and sidewalks and driveways. And I parked cars and bikes and I parked a, um, a camper, like a little van out back too, which I thought was so cool, like a little RV type situation. And I just thought that that was really cool. You can kind of see that. I mean, you can probably kind of tell that I was trying to really tie this lot in with the rest of the environment. This neighborhood is pretty cluttered. There is a lot of like small houses and garages and parked cars and vans and just like a lot of stuff going on. And it's all debug. It's not stuff that you can actually use. It's not actual lots, but I was really trying to mimic that here on this lot and make it a little bit messy and stuff. It's not necessarily run down. Like the houses are pretty nice, but you can tell that they're a little bit outdated and probably not the most expensive. However, they turned out a lot more spacious than I thought they would in the end. They all are pretty spacious. Uh, you could definitely have families of like four, maybe five Sims living in these houses. It's definitely possible. Um, for some houses, the uh, bedrooms are definitely smaller than for others, but in the like in the for the most part you can definitely like do some fun family gameplay have like four or five sims maybe some pets i think i included some stuff for pets i think for the first house the um the middle one is the one we'll be furnishing first i didn't include any pets for that but i do believe that i included for one of the houses i included stuff for a dog and then for the other one i included stuff for a cat so you can have some pets here too which i thought would be really cute and then here you can just kind of look at the uh the landscaping coming together. Like I said, this is a really long speed build. I was actually thinking of cutting up this footage and turning it into three separate videos, but then I just kind of decided against that because I was like, it might be fun to see this lot come together as a whole instead of three separate houses. I would really have to scramble up the footage just to get the exterior and interior for like one house and one video. And I think the fun in all this is the fact that I turned this one big lot into essentially three separate little lots, like three separate houses. 
that are still connected to each other. So I thought it would be fun to see that whole process and see the lot come together as a whole in that way. So that's what I decided to do, but I can completely understand if this video is too long for you. I've talked about this before in my speed builds, like short form content, long form content. It's all a little bit confusing these days. And I always think that people enjoy the short form content more these days, like the, the reels and the TikTok videos and stuff like that, um, as opposed to longer videos. But uh, I have gotten a lot of feedback here on YouTube on my longer videos of people that say, no, I love longer videos. Like I just love to listen to them while I cook or do something else or while I clean. And um, ooh, I think I just left a little alert in there. I completely missed that in the, in the editing of this. I hope that's okay. Like I said, I did build this on stream. So occasionally you might see like a little follower alert that I forgot to uh, cut out of the video, but I hope it's not too distracting. But yeah, um, I've got a lot of a lot of feedback from people saying that they like uh, longer videos because like short form content is everywhere now. So I also try to just kind of like stick to what I like to do, which is long form. Um, and I like to watch longer videos. And I know there's people like me out there that like to watch longer videos too. So I kind of want to stick to that and um, do that. I obviously also try to create like reels and TikToks and stuff like that and like upload that as well, but it just doesn't come as naturally to me. Sometimes I just don't know what to put in a reel or like put in a short and I don't know what people like to see. So it's actually kind of interesting now that I have you here, if you do watch short form content as well, is there anything in specific that you like to see? It, this is about like, I'm asking about Sims, of course, like, is there anything in specific that you would like to see? Do you like tips and tricks more? Or do you like little um, room builds? Because I do do those from time to time, like smaller room builds as reels and stuff. But like, do you like that? Or do you like want to see exteriors come together in reels? I'm not exactly sure what people like to see. And therefore, I'm not exactly sure what I like to do for those shorter videos. It's sometimes a bit confusing. And then I'm just like, you know what, never mind, I'll stick to my longer videos because I enjoy that more. But yeah, definitely let me know if there are specific things that you want to see in like TikToks and reels and YouTube shorts, of course, as well. Um, I would love to hear from you. Um, but yes, here we are moving on to the interior of the first house. And this one is extremely colorful. Like I was going a little bit overboard with this one. I used a lot of parenthood, which has a lot of very colorful items. And parenthood is such a great pack. The items in that pack just have such beautiful colors and I really enjoy them. And yeah, so I was having a lot of fun with those. I was really trying at first to make this house very 70s inspired with like 70s inspired like retro colors and stuff like that. And I think I succeeded like color scheme wise with that teal-ish green combined with orange and yellow and lots of brown. Um, so I feel like that I really succeeded in that way, but I'm not exactly sure if style wise, this is very 70s. I definitely tried to use some items to make it look and feel that way, but it's just a little bit all over the place, which is exactly what I wanted for this house too, because this house has a family of four. It has two parents, a kid and a toddler. And this house actually has two bedrooms total. And the kid and the toddler share a room, but their room is pretty massive. I tried to separate it into two rooms, but then they would be very narrow and awkward. So I decided, you know what? We could just have a shared kid's room and the kid and the toddler are just gonna have to share and like, make do with that. And thankfully their room turned out very big. So I was able to kind of divide it using a room divider literally into a area for the kid and an area for the toddler. So the kid can still play, the toddler can still take naps, like that sort of a situation. So I tried that and that actually kind of worked out. Um, but yeah, here you can see that for the floor plan, we essentially just have the front door leading you straight into the living room space. And this house turned out to be very matchy matchy. I just try to really embrace the matchy matchiness essentially for this house since I was using so much of that green color. And because I was using so many colors already, I was like, you know what? I might as well just embrace that and use those same colors over and over again and just make it very matchy matchy. So it doesn't become too overwhelming with the amount of colors. 
And I tried to just tie everything together in that way. And I feel like I succeeded. This living room space is pretty spacious. This is what I mean by the houses turned out a lot more spacious and just larger than I kind of expected them to. Um, so yeah, we have this pretty spacious living room set up um, where I placed a lot of bookcases and just a bunch of storage and some toys for the kids and stuff like that. And then we have this hallway. What I tried to do, since I really wanted to make these houses look very outdated and just a little bit on the older side of things, um, I really try to create closed off floor plans. For some reason, I really enjoy creating closed off floor plans these days for my Sims homes. That is not considered very modern, um, but there is something about it to me personally that just feels more cozy. And if there's one thing I love, it's coziness in my Sims builds. Like if you've seen my videos, you probably know this by now, but yeah, I just, I love the coziness and I love to kind of make things feel small and kind of cramped. Um, but still have it be functional without there being any like routing issues, of course. So you can still actually use it and it's functional for gameplay. But I, there's just something about making spaces more tiny and crammed together and just smaller. Um, so that's what I tried to do for this one as well. So I tried to create like a closed off floor plan, even though the rooms themselves are pretty spacious. Since the floor plan is so closed off, I can still manage to make it look very cluttered and just very close together and a little bit cramped. Um, so that's definitely what I tried for this one as well. So this kitchen actually turned out to be very spacious. It's a really big room, but I also use this for the dining room. So it's a kitchen and dining in one, which then makes it feel like more smaller because I had to put more stuff in the room. But I was having so much fun with this kitchen. It's like I said, very big. We have a nice island in the middle, but I just love how there's like little nooks, like separate little nooks and areas to this kitchen. I was able to put in a full on coffee bar. Uh, we have the fridge kind of like in the middle here to section things off. There is a nice sink area under the window where I placed a microwave. And I don't know, I just feel like this is such a family friendly, family oriented kind of kitchen. I can totally see all these Sims like coming together here and um, enjoying a meal and like talking about their day, like talking about school, stuff like that. It's just so family friendly and cozy in general. And I really try to incorporate a lot of colors as well throughout all the clutter. And here you can see in this corner here, we have a nice kitchen setup or like a little coffee bar in the kitchen. Um, and I really enjoyed that too. I never use these big kitchen or coffee makers. I think these coffee makers are from get together. There's like an espresso machine and then you also need that coffee grinder kind of thing in order for it to be functional. So I placed those items together. I had this the counter space for it anyway. So I thought, you know what? I might as well just create a full on coffee bar. These people just, the parents probably really like their coffee. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. And then we have a nice island here in the middle. And lately I've been obsessed with using this bouquet of flowers. I think it's like a fruit bouquet like a fruit flower bouquet it has some oranges and stuff i'm not entirely sure how that works i've never really seen one of those in real life let me know if you are familiar with those an object like an item like that in real life i'm not exactly sure i've never seen it before but i think it looks so cozy it's an uh it's a bouquet that comes with get famous so it really fit this style of these houses in general um as you can probably tell for these houses i used uh, doors, for the most part, doors and windows from Get Famous to really make it tie into the style and like the world, uh, like the neighborhood essentially. So just because I use those front doors and windows, the houses themselves have like this 70s look and feel to them, but they've probably been changed a little bit over time and it's not the 70s anymore. So some furniture pieces are a little bit more modern or just like in a different style, but then you can still kind of tell that the houses were built in the 70s or around that time anyway. Um, so that's kind of what I try to reflect here. And here we have a nice dining setup as well. I was obsessed with these dining chairs that I used in here. They matched the table that is from Parenthood perfectly. And those chairs are actually from cats and dogs, if I'm not mistaken. 
And the white and the orangey wood tone just matched the dining table perfectly. And I was so excited about that. So yeah, I used those. I think I used them in another house too, but I'm not exactly sure. I did finish this build a couple weeks ago at this point, so I'm not exactly sure what I did for everything. I did, of course, take a look at the build right before I like dove into this speed build, like into this um, whole voiceover situation. So I know what I did, but not like to the like every single little detail, if that makes sense. But here we have the uh, bathroom. I was going to say downstairs bathroom, but this entire house is downstairs. It's it's a bungalow. But I do believe that the parents actually have an ensuite. So this is the kids and guest bathroom off of the living room. And then the parents have an ensuite. I really try to take into consideration the bathroom situation for all these houses, since I really wanted these to be functional for maybe larger families, like larger meaning like up to five Sims, which is probably not that big, but it's not a household of two, you know what I mean? So I try to um, really think of that and put in enough bathrooms because it's really annoying for gameplay if you don't have enough bathrooms. It's realistic, but it's also annoying. Like if your Sims need to pee, they need to pee and you want there to be a bathroom, you know? Um, for my Not So Berry challenge, I'm playing Not So Berry over on uh, Twitch. And for a long time, I was living with three Sims in a small house that only had one bathroom. And it was rough, like that was difficult. That was, uh, that like made for some awkward situations and it was just not the greatest. So ever since I experienced that, I'm like, yeah, I need to have at least two bathrooms, like one bathroom per two Sims, essentially. That's usually what I try to do. Um, so here we have that larger bedroom for the kid and the toddler. And I was kind of messing around with the floor plan in here for a little bit or for with the layout, not the floor plan. Um, cause I wasn't really sure what to do. I wanted there to be enough space for the kid to play. And there definitely, definitely is. This bedroom is so big. Also, there is some construction going on outside. It's pretty noisy from time to time. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's annoying. They're like, they're drilling or something. I'm not sure what they're doing, but it's noisy from time to time. And I hope it's not too distracting if you can hear it at all. Um, but yeah, here you can kind of see that I try to divide this room into two separate areas. So we have an area for the kid to play. And I feel like this kid is lucky because they have space. They have, I gave them this um, lofted bed, as you can see. So I was able to put a desk under it to save some space since this is a shared room and I really wanted to try and make the most of the space. And then the toddler has their own little corner too. Obviously everything is going to be a little bit more crammed when the children get older, especially when we have two kids or like a teen and a child sharing that one room. Like that's probably not gonna be the greatest. They're probably gonna have some fights and it's, uh, it's a little bit of a cramped space for two bigger kids. But that's just what it is, you know, and maybe one of the kids can eventually move into the garage. Because like I said, we do have garages that you can easily turn into extra bedrooms if need be. All the garages have windows. You can easily get rid of the um, not even functional garage doors that I placed. I played those. I placed those. Um, I think they're decorative garage doors from... Uh, the city living pack, I want to say. I think they're from city living to make it look like garages, but those doors aren't actually functional. So you can easily just get rid of those, put some windows instead and renovate it into a bedroom. I think that would be very realistic as well. But uh, here you can see in the meantime, we are working on the parents bedroom and I use a lot of orange wood tones and a lot of red in there. The bedroom itself is pretty simple. They also have an ensuite, but I did not record it. I think I only recorded one bathroom per house because it was going to be a long speed build already. So I figured, you know what, I might as well just cut some of the bathrooms out. So I did that. But here we have that garage that I was talking about. And um, for this one, I turned it into a, a little like art corner situation. And I also believe I put some gym equipment in here. So it's a nice little hobby space. And of course, I used a lot of the basement kit in here. The basement kit, the, what's it called? Grungy ba basement? No, basement, basement something. I'm not exactly sure what that clutter kit is called, but I love that kit. The stuff that comes with that basement kit is just so good. And 
I have talked about this on stream a couple times, but now I really want a garage kit to go with that. I think that would be so fun. I love creating garages, but I don't do it all the time because we just don't have a lot of great things to put in garages. I always end up doing that same base game counter and cabinet situation in there because it looks very industrial and it looks like something you could use in a garage. And now that we have the basement kit, I use a lot of that stuff in there as well. But now I'm like, okay, I love this, but give me a garage kit to go along with this. Like I want some tool clutter or like tools that you can place on the wall. We have some of that coming from different packs, but I just, I want more tools and like brooms and just like random little storage things for garages would be so cool. I would love to see a kit like that. Would you like to see that too? Let me know. Is there anything that you would like to see a kit on since we seem to be getting so many of those? Is there anything that you're like, I want to get that. I have heard from a lot of people that they would love like a rugs and curtains and throw pillows kind of thing. And I would love that too, because we do not have enough of that. I, um, I'm currently working on a base game only build and oh my God, rugs and curtains in the base game are rough. Like that is something else. So I would love to see more of those. I do believe that we're getting two more kits shortly. I'm not sure when, but um, when they shared the roadmap for the beginning of this year, I think it said two community voted kits, which was the Goth Galore kit, the Create a Sim kit, and the um, Castle Estate built by kit. Then we would get a stuff pack, which was, of course, Crystal Creations. And after that, I think we were going to get another kit, one celebratory kit or something like that is what they said. So I'm wondering what that's going to be all about. Or maybe it was two. I'm not really remembering it correctly. I need to look up the little roadmap that they shared a couple months ago. There's construction again. I really hope that you can't hear that too well because it's really loud. I wonder what they're doing. There is a house like back there that they're like renovating top to bottom. I feel like they've been working on the house for so long and it's so noisy. And I really wonder what's going on. I really want to take a look inside of the house because now I'm curious. I love anything and everything real life house renovations too, which by the way is something we're, I'm totally talking over these houses now, by the way. Let me just quickly tell you that this is the second house that we're decorating. We have moved on to the second house and this is another uh, bungalow and the floor plan for this one. I love it. It's so weird. It basically has this very long hallway. You enter into the house into this very long hallway and all the rooms are off of that hallway, which I think was so cool. I was struggling with the floor plan for this specific house for a very long time. Um, and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And then I was just playing around with it and I randomly ended up with this really long hallway and People in my stream were like, listen, this is great. Now just use that hallway and create the rooms off of the hallway. And I did that and it actually turned out pretty cool. And it's fun because it reminds me of my um, late grandparents' house. It's been a long time since I've seen that house. Like I was really little when we used to go to that house. But I remember like it was a very old house, definitely like built somewhere like in the 60s or something and never renovated. So it was it was just really outdated. But essentially their house was the same thing. It was a lot smaller than this. But I remember like walking through the front door and there was this really long hallway with all like smaller rooms, like the kitchen, the living room, the dining room three bedrooms, a tiny half bath, a full bath, like all off of this really narrow windowless hallway, essentially. Um, so that's kind of what it reminded me of. And that's why this feels pretty realistic to me and also pretty outdated. And I love how this one came together interior wise too. Um, this room has, or this house has three bedrooms total. It has one master or like main bedroom. 
Um, and then it has on the other side, like in the back of the house, it has two smaller bedrooms with a Jack and Jill bathroom. So the parents' bedroom is out front. They do not have an ensuite, but there is a, um, a bathroom here off of the living room too. So that's the full bathroom that the parents also use. And then the kids have their Jack and Jill. And I thought it would be really funny to create one of those typical sibling situations where we have a teenage big sister who is very much into fashion and makeup and she would be one of the like popular girls in school maybe she does the cheerleading or whatever um and i was thinking that she would definitely be like very popular and she likes to take her time in the bathroom and stuff and then she has a little kid brother who is very rambunctious and like to play likes to play outside and is into sports and is just very messy and likes to probably also prank his big sister all the time and they would have to like share a Jack and Jill bathroom and you can only imagine that that's probably going to cause a lot of trouble with the kids locking each other out of the bathroom, the little brother playing pranks or pulling pranks on his big sister, the big sister yelling and screaming and being incredibly annoyed by all of it like that sort of a situation is kind of what I try to create um, in their bedrooms. I try to kind of you know, make it so that their bedrooms show their personality in that sense a little bit. Um, but yeah, here you can see that I'm working on the kitchen, which is in the back of the house. And it's again, one of those more outdated kitchens. I'm using a hardwood floor in this kitchen here, which isn't something I do a lot. Usually I like to use tiles in closed off kitchens, but since I'm using an archway instead of a door, I was like, I would like to continue the um, flooring that I'm using in the hallway and in all the other rooms, except for the bedrooms. I used carpet. Uh, so that's what I tried to do here. And I really like this wood floor in the kitchen. It really gives a lot of warmth and it makes it feel cozy. And I just really like it. And in this kitchen here, we also have the dining space. So this kitchen doesn't have an island because I didn't have the space for it since I also needed to put in a full on dining table. So we just have a kitchen like a U. It's not a U. It's a what kind of shape kitchen is this? A U shape? A an L-shaped kitchen, that's what it is. Oh my God. <laughs> I was looking at this, I was like, what What do people call this? It's an L-shaped kitchen, Marie. Okay, there we go. Um, so we have a little L-shaped kitchen, no island, and then uh, as you can see, a living or a dining table in the middle. And I was really trying to clutter up the space as well um, with like a china cabinet in the corner and putting things on diagonals to, I don't know, make the space feel a bit more cozy, I want to say. And I really like the interior for this house too. I think that maybe, oh, by the way, I also uh, tried to, or decided to put in stuff for a dog for this house. So we have a little, a small dog is what I was thinking for this family, like a tiny little dog. I thought that would be cute. Um, but yeah, as I was trying to say, I think that this is my favorite house out of all three of them. I do believe so. I don't know why. Like, I like the colorfulness of the first one. I really enjoy that. It was definitely out of my comfort zone. But this one feels just very realistic and just so cozy. And I really like the Jack and Jill situation for the kids' rooms. And I like the dark brown and purple colors here in the parents' room. I don't know what it is about this house. I just also really like the kitchen and the living room situation. So... I don't know. I feel like this is just my favorite one for some reason. Let me know by the end of the video, by the way, if you've seen me decorate all three houses, which one's your favorite and why? I really want to know. And also, if you're still here, like 40 minutes into the speed build, let me know if you're still here. Comment a, um, what should we do? Comment a little star emoji or wait, no. Either a star or like a heart or something. 
do that. If you're still here, <laughs> I want to know and like put a little, put a little emoji in the, in the comments, please. Um, but we are moving on after the parents' bedroom. We are moving on to the kids' room. This is the little brother's room. His room is definitely a little cramped. It's, it's kind of small, but I really like how it came together. It has um, enough space for the kid, I feel. And I was really trying to reflect that he is into sports. You can tell by his wallpaper that I'm using and then his baseball bedding. That was actually a suggestion from someone in chat that I was very thankful for. They were like, hey, there's this base game bed with the base game or with the baseball um, duvet covers. And I completely forgot that this bed had this swatch. So I decided to use it in here and it was actually perfect. So we have a lot of blue and orange going on and just very colorful and a little messy. I do believe that this bed it's base game now, but didn't it come with parenthood originally? And then they added it to the base game, which I'm actually pretty thankful for. I can also imagine people getting upset over that because you paid for parenthood, maybe to like specifically to get that bed, or if anything, you, you paid for the pack and then you got the bed. But also parenthood is so old at this point. I feel like, like I'm okay with them adding stuff like tiny things, just like smaller stuff. Not everything, but if they just were to add one bed to the base game, I'm like, sure, this this pack has been out for years. Um, and you've been, if you've had the pack for years, you've been able to play with this bed for years. And I feel like it's okay that they add like things to the base game just to update it from time to time. Um, I think that's uh, that's okay. But here you can see we have the teenage sister, like the big sister's bedroom. And I really try to make this one quote unquote very girly by using a lot of pink and soft colors, like lots of pastels. And I really try to clutter it up with lots of makeup and clothes and just like school supplies and stuff like that. This bedroom is also small. It's a little bit bigger than the kid's room, um, which I always give the smallest room to the smallest kid, which doesn't actually always make that much sense because children do need more things like they need toys and stuff to keep them entertained, whereas teenagers don't. So and toys are big, like they take up a lot of space. Have you seen the toy doll houses? Like they're huge. I always size them down, but still like they take up space and we have the large like stuffed animals and the toy boxes. And I always want to try to at least put in two of those things for the kid to play with. And it definitely takes up space. But yeah, I just I gave the teenager the biggest room and then the little brother the smaller room. And this is their Jack and Jill. I did record this one because I thought it was fun to uh, kind of reflect and like try to show you that I furnished this bathroom for the children of the house, even though the, the oldest one is already a teenager, but they've been living here probably for longer than that. And they've been sharing this bathroom for a while. So I tried to make it a little bit more childish, if you will, if I, if you could put it that way, um, by placing a lot of like colorful items in the bathroom. And I had a little bit of fun with that. But then here we have the garage, which again, I just turned into a little hobby space um, where I placed a um, some gym equipment. We have the treadmill and also the punching bag here. And again, just a whole bunch of clutter, basically the garages. I mean, layout wise, they're different for all three houses, but um, activity wise, they're pretty much the same for all of them. I just turned them into small storage slash home gym situations. And then here we're moving on to the last house. And I remember being a little bit unsure about this one, like what I wanted to do layout wise, color scheme wise. I've been using a lot of darker wood tones for the previous two houses. So what I knew I wanted to do was use a lighter wood floor in this one. That was my cat's food, by the way. <laughs> if you could just hear that, that was my cat's um, automatic feeder. Um, so yeah, I really tried to use lighter colors for this one for like floor wise, like hardwood floors. Um, so I tried that. And then for the style, the overall style of this house, I just wasn't entirely sure what to do. So I tried to make it look a little bit more on the messy side of things. Um, it's definitely very mismatched. And I decided that these people would have a cat. So I placed a scratching post in there, like a big one. 
Um, and I, re I think I placed a couple smaller ones too. And I also had space for a small computer desk, like a little family computer here in the living room as well. And I just remember having a hard time decorating this one style-wise. I just wasn't sure what I was doing and I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. And I also had trouble like figuring out the layout for the living room space, though I really like how it came out in the end. I love this couch. This couch is also from the um, basement kit, I believe. And then I combined it with this pretty like 70s looking chair from uh, the Growing Together pack. And I feel like that goes together nicely. I love this brown rug to add in some like darker colors. And I don't know, overall, I feel like this house looks a little messy, but it's cute. Like they could use some help interior style wise, but also because it's so messy, it's very unique and they just use the items that they have. They just use what they have and make do with that. They thrift a lot of items probably as well. So that's probably why it doesn't all go together that well and it's pretty cluttered. And this one has the sneaky second floor. So this one has three bedrooms as well. We have the parents' bedroom downstairs, and we also have a um, bathroom downstairs off of the kitchen dining. And then upstairs we have two bedrooms and also a hall bathroom. So we have a room for a teenager and a room for I believe it's an infant. I'm not exactly sure what I did. We'll see that once we move on to the actual upstairs or like second floor, but I believe I did a teenager and an infant. And for this teenager, um, I actually created a, a little garage band, not in the garage, but in the shed out back. By the way, I also know that I skipped over the backyard for the second house because I had to like cut out a little bit of footage. It was a little much. So I cut out the backyard, but of course at the end of the video, I will show show you the lot in real time and we'll take a little tour and I'll show you all the yards and stuff um, and uh, that'll that'll all be fine. But yeah, I cut out the second backyard. In the um, shed out back for this house, I actually created a small garage band. I thought that would be so cool for the teenager. For their bedroom, I tried to go a little bit more goth, I want to say. I used a lot of dark colors and I used a lot of that goth kind of decorative stuff from the high school years pack and really try to reflect them being a kind of like a moody teenager maybe that is into dark colors. They like black, they like rock music maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but they're in a band. They love music. So I thought that would be a fun way to actually utilize the space out in the shed. Um, so yeah, I created a little garage band, if you will. And I think that would be such a fun little activity for your Sims to do. If there is one thing I would love to see still like come to the game, it's bands, music bands. It would be so fun. We have that in The Sims 2. I'm not sure if we had it in The Sims 3 because I never actually played The Sims 3. So I'm not sure what all we had in The Sims 3, but we had bands in The Sims 2 and I feel like it'd be so fun if those were added to The Sims 4 as well. Like where they would give us little drum kits. We have the smaller pianos now, which is very helpful already, but I just wish we had more musical instruments. I think it'd be such a fun hobby for The Sims 4. Um, anyway, here we have the downstairs bathroom, which is the bathroom for the parents. They have uh, an ensuite here too, which I did not record, but um, yeah. So there are actually three bathrooms in this house, which is pretty nice. There is a hall bathroom off of the kitchen. So technically not a hall bathroom, but like a bathroom for everyone to use. Then there is a ensuite for the parents and there is an upstairs hall bathroom for the kids to share. So that's really nice. So you could easily like turn the garage for this one. Again, Again, into an extra bedroom. You could easily have some more Sims here. This house definitely feels a bit more spacious too. Um, even though the, the rooms upstairs, like the bedrooms upstairs are definitely very small. Here you can see I'm getting started on the bedroom for the teenager. I try to use a lot of black in here and I also try to use the dark green carpet. Uh, I used carpet in the bedrooms for all three houses actually because I felt like it would suit the style of these houses. And to me, I feel like the more older houses, maybe like more outdated houses would have 
more outdated looking carpet in the bedrooms, which is what I try to kind of do. I know carpet can also be used in modern houses and like in a modern way, but for these houses, I try to make it look like a little bit more outdated and like older carpet. And so I try to use the green carpet in here, which doesn't necessarily go with the rooms, but it's just the floor that's there. So they would kind of have to work with that. You could, of course, rip it out and put in new carpet and renovate the room. But I feel like maybe these people wouldn't have the budget for that or it wouldn't be their first priority because, I mean, the carpet is fine. It's just not super pretty. So they would still like keep it and use it. So that's kind of what I was trying to mimic here in these rooms. And you can see that I used a lot of black in here. I actually really focused on the high school years pack for this room since it does come exactly with the style of items that I was looking for, like a lot of black and maybe some neon colors and just some darker teenage um, activities or like decorations, stuff like that. So I was really trying to mimic that in here and I really tried to make the room very uh, messy with a bunch of clutter and they probably got yelled at that they need to clean their room all the time, but then they never do. I feel like maybe this teenager wouldn't have the best relationship with their parents at this moment in time. Maybe their parents are divorced and they are now living with their mom or dad and their mom or dad remarried and then they had a baby so now there is a half sibling who is only just an infant and the teenager really doesn't like that they're like what why do i have this baby sibling in my house like i don't i don't want it here <laughs> like that sort of a situation and they make really loud music like in the shed which is a good thing that they have the shed for that i feel like that actually is perfect and um, yeah, I could I could imagine them maybe getting into trouble with the with the neighbors from time to time because of their band and it being so loud, stuff like that. You know, that's kind of the family dynamic that I was seeing for um, for this house, at least. And here you can see we have the uh, the infant's room, which is really small. But for an infant, I feel like it's OK. I eventually placed a little play mat, I think, downstairs as well. So or I might have already done that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, there's a play mat downstairs and there's this really small infant's room with, of course, a changing table in the room, which I'm still mad we didn't get one of those with base game. We only have changing tables that came with growing together. I wish, I wish they would have gone back and given us a changing table for base game too, since infants themselves, of course, are base game. So I feel like that would only make sense. Um, but here in the garage, I cheated a little bit and I parked a car <laughs> to fill up the space. So this house has a car in the garage. And then I moved on to their backyard. I did want to include this one since I did do the little garage band for this one or the shed band, I think I want to I want to call it since it's not technically garage. Uh, but for this one, we have a nice outdoor seating on the back porch. We have a grill and an outdoor dining table. I actually kind of essentially did that same setup for all the backyards. They're approximately all the same size. So I was able to get in dining tables and grills and little bent or like lounge sets outside as well, which I thought was really cute. And then um, here, as you can see, we have the shed where I just quickly created a small band area and also there is some play equipment um outside like just outside of this backyard and i think it'd be so cute because probably all the neighbor kids will also be using that same play equipment so it's a cute little area for the kids to come together and to play um so i thought that would be really cute but yeah here you can see the small band coming together it's of course not actually functional because like i said we don't have bands in the sims 4 but I tried to find like this, this mixing table and just other like equipment kinds of things like carts with lights and equipment that actually come with the Get Famous pack. So I tried to use those in here because I feel like they would probably also like play venues and stuff. So they would have their little equipment um their electricity and stuff but that's basically it so let's jump into the game and i'll show you these three houses in real time so here we have the three houses in the game i feel like they really tie in with the rest of the neighborhood nicely as you can see i try to match them up with these little driveways which isn't perfect because it just doesn't line up perfectly but i tried and i think it looks pretty fun the landscaping isn't too neat or anything i also ended up placing 
using this hopscotch game outside and the marbles. I think that would be so fun for the kids to use as well. And then of course we have the back over here, which I also really like. I just really like this little street. It's so realistic to me. And I actually really like this neighborhood. I want to build here more because it's actually kind of cute. So yeah, we have all these sheds and this RV parked out back and all the yards. But let's just start here with this house on the right. They have their car parked and their garage, of course. And this is the house with the weird hallway that I was talking about, the second one I furnished. So there is a front door here that leads you straight into this hallway. So there is an entryway space here. Then this door directly leads you into the garage, which isn't super fascinating or anything, but it's a nice space to have. And then over here is the living room space. It's very brown and beige. I tried to introduce or like use some color here with this green rug. I thought that was a nice splash of color, if you will. They uh, have their fireplace here, their TV in the corner, and then a family computer out here in this little corner. And off of the living room is this full bathroom. And also off of the living room is the parents' bedroom. So they have this room here out front. I try to not clutter it up too much, but still make it look lived in and cozy. So they have their dresser here and you can put up some pictures and stuff. Then going back into the hallway, in the back here, we have the kitchen and dining. So this is the L-shaped kitchen, which is still nice and spacious, I feel. They even have their small dishwasher, which is really nice. Their china cabinet here in the corner and of course, a dining table in the middle. And then in this sneaky little corner here, I have the perfect spot for laundry. I included laundry for all these houses, which if that's annoying for gameplay, you could obviously just get rid of it. But I have the perfect nook here, so I had to use that. And then here across from the kitchen is the little brother's room. He is into sports, which I try to reflect in his room. Then there is a Jack and Jill here. I try to make this one colorful because it's the one that the kids use. And then at the end of the hallway and on the other side of the Jack and Jill is the big sister's room, which as you can see is very pink and girly and cutesy. I was thinking that they're into makeup and fashion. That is just kind of what they like to do. Maybe with this new pack, with the new Crystal Creations pack, they could be into like jewelry making or something like that. That could be pretty cute as well. And then off of the kitchen, they have a sliding door into the backyard. So there is a cute back porch here with a lounge set, a dining table outside, some loungers here. And then there's a shed here with some storage and some bikes and a little painting setup. Oh, and of course I placed this basketball thingy out back too, which I thought would be really cute and kind of realistic to have. Then moving on to the second house, this is the one that I furnished first in the speed build and it's extremely colorful. So going into the house, we have this little entry space here. They have a goldfish. So they actually do have a pet, just not a cat or a dog. And then their living room is very colorful. This house is pretty overwhelming, but I really like the colors. There is a nice fireplace here and uh, beautiful orange curtains, a lot of books here in the back. And off of the living room space is this hall bathroom. Nothing too fancy, just a nice full bath. Then over here is the hallway where again, I placed a laundry, of course. And then on this side is the kitchen and dining, which is really spacious. I feel like this is probably where they spend the majority of their time. I really like how this kitchen came out. I normally struggle with big kitchens, but since this one's so colorful, I feel like it's pretty fun. There is a coffee nook here in the back. And then of course there is this dining table set up, the sink here by the window and a sliding door into the backyard. Across from the kitchen here is the kids room. So this is a shared room between a child and a toddler. I feel like there's definitely enough toys and space for the children to play. And then the toddler has their own little corner here in the back and also a changing table. And then all the way in the back here is the parents room where I use some red. I don't really use the color red a lot, but I really like it for this room. I feel like it's pretty cozy. They have some dressers here and then they have their ensuite, which again is nothing too fancy, but it's nice and functional. And of course they have their garage here, which is nice and cluttered. They have a space to do some art here, a bunch of storage and random items, and also some gym equipment and some bikes. And then of course they also have their backyard. So a dining table set up, a grill, you can lounge here, a swing set for the kids to play with, and then 
then over here they have their shed where I parked an old car. I thought maybe this is a car that one of the parents is working on. Maybe they're trying to fix it up or something. Oh, and this is by the way where we have the mailboxes. So I just placed these three mailboxes in one spot for all the houses to use. And then moving on to the last house over here. This is the one with the sneaky second floor. You can play basketball out front here as well. There is also a sneaky picnic bench here in the corner, which I thought would be cute. And then going inside, we just have this basic entryway space with the staircase and your regular entryway knickknacks. And then through this archway here is the kitchen and dining. I love the color scheme in this kitchen. I use a lot of white, as you can see, and I feel like it just looks really nice. So all the equipment in the kitchen, it's not too cluttered, definitely functional. In the corner here in the kitchen, we have the laundry. I thought this was the perfect nook. And these people also have a pet. So I placed this um, little feeder. And then off of the kitchen here is a full bathroom with just a shower for once. And of course, a sink and a toilet. Then through this archway, you enter into the living room space, which is definitely a little bit all over the place style wise. But I feel like it's pretty cozy because of that. So they have lots of plans. They have their TV over here, a nice cat tree in the corner and also a family computer over here, some books here in the back and some space to play with a little one, of course. Then over here is a small hallway that leads you into the garage, which is actually where I placed the litter box. I thought that would be pretty nice and a good space to have that. And then over here is the parents room. So loving the green carpet in here, definitely something different. Another cat tree in here and they just have their dresser and also a nice ensuite which is nice and spacious and functional. And then going upstairs, we have the tiny second floor with a small landing. And then over here is the teen's room. I love the detail with this door. I think that's really fun. It's a high school years thing. It also has decorations on the inside. So yeah, this room is very moody and dark. I use a lot of black. It's very cluttered and messy, but they have everything um, that you would need. They also have a little guitar in here so they can practice some of that in here and a desk, of course, to sit and do their homework. And then over here is a small infant's bedroom, which is all of a sudden a lot more colorful. I love the pink and this rug is so cute. So yeah, just your basic little infant's bedroom. And then over here they have their shared bathroom. So this one's a bit more spacious and I cluttered it up with some colorful items. I actually think this bathroom's really cute. And then of course they also have their yard. So off of the living room here is a back porch with some benches or couches and and there is this extended terrace with a grill, a dining table. And then all the way back here is the shed where of course I placed the garage band equipment. I think this turned out pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's not functional as a band, but you can do some uh, music producing and stuff here. So I think that's kind of fun. And there is a small area to do some, um, some gardening back here as well. But that is basically it for these three houses. So these three small houses on one lot are up on the gallery as a residential rental with a unit count of three. And I built it on a 50 by 40 in the world of Del Sol Valley. So if you wanna place it in your game, then that is where it goes. I also uploaded them unfurnished as a residential lot. So you can find them unfurnished with just the floor plans done on the gallery as well. But that's gonna do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. You can obviously go ahead and download this build off the gallery like I just showed you. My username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Instagram, Threats, and on TikTok if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you like to get notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.